Good morning, everybody. This is Martin John, and I am coming at you with the Dow of the day. I'm starting a little slow today, moving my body. Ran three months this morning, and just just kind of getting into it. I got a I got a lot going on today. The love of my life is coming to town. Uh, Andy Scarantino, uh, she's here on Wisdom. So if you're familiar. Uh, we met here on Wisdom and are soulmates. That's just how that works. <laughs> Don't know how it all worked out, but it is beautiful. But this is Tao of the Day, not, not Romance Corner. <laughs> Tao of the Day is all about how to live a reasonable life. How are you living a reasonable life today? What I ask is that you come up and pick a number between 1 and 81, and then we will look at uh, a chapter of the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching is an ancient text, and that text um, was written by, presumably, by Lao Tzu, and it is 81 verses on how to live a reasonable life. You know, very often when we get stuck, uh, in looking outside of ourselves at things to change. You know, we want the war in Ukraine to change. We want, we want um, to have more of something or less of something. And, and, you know, so often we get caught up in the idea that our experience is being had outside of us, is being had, um, you know, against us in some way. But as we go through the Tao, we realize that we can be here in the center. We are here in the center, creating all of this um, from where we are. And it isn't that we're creating things that we want or don't want. I mean, maybe we can talk about it as energetically, but it's the way you're perceiving the world. And the way you're perceiving the world is the way that your world is created. If you perceive the world from a place of lack, you will experience lack. If you experience the, if you, if, if you're, if you perceive the world as a dangerous place, it will definitely be a dangerous place and you will, and you will, uh, and you will focus on and see dangerous things. If you see the world as a place that is supportive of you if you see the world as a place that is um, grateful for your existence because you're grateful for your experience well then the world starts to become that you know and that is uh, at the core of the Tao Te Ching um, you know I'm often come up here and pick a number myself, especially, you know, like when I'm, I'm, I'm literally coming on this early to just lay low a little bit. So, you know, not, not, you know, like I'm, I'd be fine if this, uh, if this talk went an hour, I'd be fine if I wrapped it up in 20 minutes. You know, I'm very much open to however it's going to unfold. But truth be told, I came on this early so that I can you know, keep a low profile this morning, not looking to uh, have a whole lot of engagement. Sometimes that happens when I come on early. Uh, but the reason is, is because I'm going to a friend's house today early. I got to leave in less than two hours. Um, and I just, I want to do a good Dow. I want to have a Dow for myself. And if anybody wants to come up and pick a number between 1 and 81. I would love to share that with you. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to pick number 33. And I'm, what, I, what I do here on Tao of the Day is if you come up and pick a number, I'll read through that chapter of the Tao. You'll give me your first impressions, some words or thoughts or lines that popped out at you. And then we'll go through it line by line to understand the whole. So number 33, which is my number today, Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. If you realize that you have enough, you are truly rich. If you stay in the center and embrace death with your whole heart, you will endure forever. 
<clears throat> you know, this is interesting, you know, like as, as it relates to death and embracing death with your whole heart, that's a, that's a thing I think a lot of people get discouraged by. I don't think a lot of people want to embrace death. And that's interesting because I have, and I don't know if it's through the Tao or through my experience with uh, drugs and alcohol and, and the fact that I feel like a lot of my life is on borrowed time. So I'm just more open to the idea that like, Hey, I'm going to die. And that's cool. Like I can die soon. I'm not afraid of it. I'll lie down and die the day that it's, that it's meant for me. I recently did a dark retreat for those of you who uh, have been following me for a while. And you may recall that, you know, I got stung by a scorpion during that, during that episode. And when that happened, when I was stung by a scorpion, I didn't know if I was going to die. And I laid down and I just observed the things that were happening in my life. You know, and, and when I say that, it was more happening in my body. I just, I just observed. I was like, oh, there's tingling in my throat and tongue and lips, my hands and feet. Like I'm getting cold sweats. I don't have a fever. And, and I was just observing all of these things. Ah, Lois is coming up. We're going to come back to 33, but we're going to chat with Lois for a bit. Hey, Lois. Did you hear the rest of the story? I'm good. I thought you would finish your story. Most people all get in the queue and they'll say, well, I'm going to finish my story. <laughs> Oh, not me. My story is not important as you. Oh, man, your point was important to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, well, I, I don't even have, I'm going to be you, real. You, I don't even have a number, okay? You don't I'm really, just, well, then let's you and I do 33 together. Okay, that'll work. That'll, yeah, because this, this was mine this morning, and I just wanted, and this is what we're talking about. So knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. If you realize that you have enough, you are truly rich. If you stay in the center and embrace death with your whole heart, you will endure forever. Definitely- you know, and I, I was looking at that, you know, like, and, and what I started talking about was this idea that, like, you know, it's not easy for a lot of people. I think you and I both embrace death. Yeah. You know, I, I know. I choice. <laughs> well, right. I just felt but, like you know, it. No, I do. Go ahead. But so many people think that they do have a choice. Yes. You know, and that's the thing that, that, that me speaking about the Tao, really, I think, at the end of the day, I really want people to realize that, love this moment, motherfucker, because... The next one ain't promised to you. Right. Like you're (laughs) going to die. You are going, you are definitely going to die. So whatever it is you're worried about right now, when you, you know, if, if, when I got stung by that scorpion and thought that, Hey, I might die. Mm -hmm. I laid down and I just started observing what was going on in my body. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think back at like, I wasn't anywhere else. I wasn't thinking about there, 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 there's so, I don't think that there's a single regret in my life. Okay. You know, that doesn't mean I haven't done things that I wish I hadn't at the time, but there's nothing in my life that I regret having done because it's all brought me here. Yes. Yes, 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 and more yes. I, that's how I feel too. Because, but I, I understood, I, you know, and it doesn't matter to me anymore. People didn't understand that about me, because they were like, "What do you mean you would do it all over again?" And I'm like, "I wouldn't choose to, but if I had to, if I if that meant I get here again, mm-hmm. I would go through the shit again, mm-hmm. because I love where I am right now, and and even though I don't know what's going to happen from day to day." or what I'm going to do each day. I'm still at more peace than I was when my life was falling apart and I knew everything. (laughs) 
That's right. Remember, I, I put, I should put, I did air quotes. I, you can't see that. Yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> when I knew everything. Mm-hmm. Now I recognize, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna sorry. I'm gonna say it like this. I don't know a motherfucking thing. Damn right. Okay. And and, thing. Go, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So many of us, you know, like I'm putting, I'm actually putting out an email today that is all about hiding from ourselves. You know, like when you live under the influence of other things, like, like I, I recently interviewed and released an interview for my podcast with this guy, Thomas Freeme. Thomas Freeme is here on Wisdom every now and again, and he's mm-hmm. a returning citizen. He's, he's spent 13 years in prison. And, and he and I were talking about this idea that he didn't want to be a criminal. And so he lied to other people telling him he wasn't a criminal. While behind their back, he's doing all these crimes. Well, if he's lying to other people, who is he really lying to? Okay, there it is. Right? And if he's going to lie to himself, he's never going to look at the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, he and I also spoke about the idea that the fact that he was in prison for 15 or 13 years or whatever it was, he had a lot of time to think. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's the thing. Like, so many people, like... So many people get so much time to think in prison and depending on how they're going to think, depending on how their minds move and how their minds advance, they're going to be thinking differently, you know, and it's like, it's such a, how many of us, if we had 15 years to think, would be thinking about our lives very differently than we do right now? I'm not trying to say everyone should just get into prison, but I am saying that like all the people that are not in prison don't get that privilege. Now, there's a lot I would to say, be said I would about say, that. I would say this, okay? I'm going to say this. Everybody may not be in a physical prison, because, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. they feel for a long ass time. That's why I don't want to go back in it. Everybody mm-hmm. is in a fucking prison anyway That's of right. their own mind. Of their own freaking mind. That's where the war ground is. That's where the war room is. That's where everything that could go wrong, can go wrong, will go wrong. It begins in the mind. And I've saw so many people in fr- prison that were in prison that were free because I worked in prison too. I told you I were prison, probation, yeah. control, you name it, in the mental health field. Lois was there because I wanted to understand. I no, I want to understand Lois. Yeah. <laughs> why do mm-hmm. I have all this stuff on the inside, and why why would they do this? And I know those people didn't do this. And I say those people I mean the the prisoners that I was in yeah. charge of psychological health. I know they didn't do that to me, but I wanted to understand what kind of what is the me- mechanics behind a mind that could think of stuff. And then that's where I found that shit. Everybody's doing their best thinking based on getting their needs met that they can do regardless to whether they were rich or whether they were the, the lowest of the whatever, based on the society, the lowest of the lowest of the right. earth. They yeah. were just so, and and that's the, doing their best thought. Right. And that's the thing. When you say get their needs met, yeah, you know, you're born and you're on you like this is this is the kind of grand scope that this is knowing others as intelligence knowing yourself as true wisdom this is where this whole thing starts like you get that you you step back and you're under the influence of your parents i like to say that because like you are like your parents show you what your needs are and how to meet them yeah they don't necessarily show you they don't they don't teach you to do crimes or to hurt people in order to get your needs met. What they do is they, they, they show you the world that they understand. Now, how you interpret that, yeah. how you interpret and learn about the world and your place in it is how you are going to start to unpack the world and start to make decisions on how to get your needs met. Now, yes. if Thomas, the person I, if myself, hell, mm-hmm. like if any of us or you, like mm-hmm. learn, oh, the world doesn't like me mm-hmm. because no, I'm I, different. I mean, hostile. The world mm-hmm. was a mean, hostile place. That was That's my right. presupposition. 
that I didn't even was, wasn't even aware of, but it was based on where I grew up, how I was living, the way I saw the adults act around me, even mm. the the famous ones. Okay, because yes. I was my, I was around a lot of famous musicians as a child because my daddy was a musician, and I saw all kinds of crap, and I'm thinking, okay. I guess this is just the way the world is because here, here I got an example of what the rich and famous do in my house. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, all they do is get drunk and and sleep each other's people and and, and and get high and get spaced out of their freaking mind. That's what I saw. Now I know the real world ain't like that now, but if that was the only world you grew up seeing and because some people well you grew up in gang and when no gangs had just started when i was growing up so i saw some cutthroat stuff but it wasn't like me watching the adults around me that's supposed to be rich and famous and and everybody's like ah and i was like what the fuck are they doing all that for if they didn't mm. see that my daddy's garage when he was hitting that day you know you they would say uh yeah so for me it was a the world was a uh was a harsh place it was a That's harsh right. place. and because because i believe a that preconceived idea of what the world mm -hmm. was because you observed and right. and because you had no other frame of reference right that's what the world was and if that's what the world was you went out and you tried to live in that world rather than the world that actually existed you you didn't have a frame of reference to be in a world that actually existed so mm -hmm. you you and that world is only in your mind anyway so so right. the world that you were living in was the world that was in your mind and you were out mm -hmm. there trying to trying to get your needs met in that world today that world. you're trying yeah. to get your needs met in a world in the same world but with a different perspective with a different frame of reference yes because for me it was a the preposition of a uh, mean crossed out cruel world was because i watched very good people go through some very rotten shit and very yeah. bad people get away with some very rotten shit okay yeah, and yeah. like this doesn't make sense to me how do i avoid this kind of stuff so my thing was i saw suffering people i wanted to help them that's why i wanted to be a psychologist. That's why I went right. to be Dr. Joyce. That's why I went into the field I went into and was doing what I was doing because I figured in my world can't get better unless I make it better, but I got to figure out what's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, that's it was, always, and, and, it was always my fault. It was always my fault, regardless to what it was that was being perpetrated. It was turned around and it was always, if you hadn't did this, if you wasn't wearing that, mm -hmm. if you hadn't went there, if you had, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not doing any of that stuff. What? You know, yeah. and like I said, it took it took me when I went to college, when I decided, okay, well, I don't want no parts of the musical industry life and I don't want no parts of the of the of the helping the people at, at, on a on a level which was not an educated one for my mama, you don't want to be me, you help people and the people screw you. Okay, I didn't want to be that person, but I knew I wanted to help people, so I said I'm going to go to college and I'm going to learn how to help people and they're going to at least pay me. If they go screw me, they're going to pay me first. Yeah, that's right. That was my attitude. I'm going to be real. That was uh -huh. my attitude. And my mother was like, I didn't think of that, you know? Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> it, was my, to get paid. it was my ticket out because I know yeah. it can be sports. I knew it. I, knew, I mean, I could have, but women weren't getting paid for sports. Then when no WNBA. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And I knew I couldn't, I couldn't go the other route. Um, and, and I, and I definitely didn't want the route that I was watching. Right. So, so I had to, I had to strike out and become what they call a maverick, a real maverick where I'm mm -hmm. here I'm in this unknown foreign territory on a college campus. And everybody seems to have more information than me. And I can't even say ma help. That's right. Okay. You know, and, and, and then I saw other people's families uh, living differently. And I'm like, what is this tomfoolery? <laughs> That's right. Wait, where's the whoop? Where's the ass whooping? We stayed out That's all right. night. You know, I, I had a very warped conception of what the real world was really about based on the fact that I had only seen the bottom. Right. 
And you know, that's the, that's, that's what this, that is so much of what this verse is about, because that's knowing others is intelligence. You went out and observed and said, I know the world and I know what people are like. And then when you got out into a bigger world, you were like, wait, I'm confused. This isn't the way I knew it, you know, but then the, this, this verse continues saying, knowing yourself is true wisdom. You know, when you know yourself and you can just be wherever Mm -hmm. others are no matter who those others are you know mm -hmm. some people can know others and then they think they know themselves but really all they know is others and then they can be comfortable around a specific group of others this is mm -hmm. where rate you know like racist you know kkk motherfuckers are because it's just like we're not racist there are no black people in my neighborhood it's like right like right and as soon as one comes in, then what's, you know, like, that's the problem, you know, yeah. because you only know others, you only know the others that you're comfortable with. And that is just intelligence. And then, but knowing yourself, knowing truly knowing yourself, not pretending to know yourself because you're just so comfortable around the others you're around. Like when you grew up, you grew up on the bottom, then you started going to college and everybody was different. Yes. And I, and, and it wasn't, and I didn't, and I'm gonna be real. I always felt I didn't fit in and I didn't fit in mm -hmm. that world. I did no. not fit in that world. I didn't fit in where I came from. I felt like a misfit or a, mis, a misfit or what they call it, a miscreant. I was miscreated is what I thought. Mm. I want you to come back up because I want to continue down this because we're looking right. at this pretty deep. You know, I love when I come on here and I just look at, you know, and I get to look at look at my Dow for the day and, and Lois is joining me for my Dow for the day, which is 33. And it's such a there's a lot of there's a lot of connection here because Lois and I both have a history. So um, but mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. And this is this is fitting in mm -hmm. mastering others. Right. When you were in college, you felt like you didn't fit in. But as long as you were able to get by and have nobody ask you no motherfucking questions. <laughs> I know the whole thing is they asked me the motherfucking questions. I'm gonna be real. And I knew the motherfucking answers. But right. Joyce still felt like she didn't belong. Mm -hmm. It was like I was a like I said, I was a misfit. Oh yeah, you know this information, but you still a misfit because this ain't your world. Right. But the world I came from said you can't come back here because you think you educated. That's that was That's the word right. that was told to you me. Th yeah. You, who, who the hell you, you think, think you're too you good are? For you went to college for a year and <clears> you come back here think you're all educated. I don't know who the fuck you are. And I was like, oh, I'm not even welcome at home. What's That's where right. is? And then I then I went on the search. Where is my home? And when I met my husband, I was like, okay, I got a home now. Okay, mm. you know what I'm saying? It was I got a home for that. now. Uh, yeah, for okay. But I didn't know that. I thought That's I had right. a home now. And then I, yeah. then I get to the next stage of my life. I got a home now. Yeah, and it was like, this is bullshit. This is just mortar and brick. Okay. <laughs> and then right. I get to the, this is No. And I didn't find my home until everything was stripped away. Then I got to me. Yeah. Then I got to see all of the examples that had been laid out for me. Because see, you, you know that hindsight is 20 fucking 20 yeah, okay yeah. and i was able to at least i was able to read the road map i had walked up into then and then start putting the pieces together and that's when i realized oh my god that's when i got the aha moment that it was that the that everything that i was going through every situation no matter whether it was work whether it was relationship whether it was friendship whether it was family it had mm -hmm. one common denominator as you, girl. <laughs> my ass. My black that's ass. Right. I was like, and that, oh, shit. Oh, and that's man. the, you know, and that is the thing, right? Mastering others is strength. Getting married with another person, like going to community, having church, or going to yeah, work, or whatever. That's all people, others. Pe but wait, when, doing right. therapy with people, people that's getting right. healed based on me asking certain questions. Right. Did not compute, okay? I'm sorry. But mastering yourself. And that's like what knowing you, you that's it. true right. strength. And and that that isn't about other people. That means no, no matter who comes in your orbit, you have yourself mastered. Amen. And you know, now if and down that. And yeah. I, 
and it had took it took a while. It took a while. This was not a a a, a no. quick fix or anything like that. It was years and years of struggle and study and trying to, and I like was, that's why I call myself a triad and trying this <laughs> technique and yeah. that technique or you know, this I was, drug or that or whatever. I was but, talking to to Andy. Uh, mm-hmm you know, my love. And she and I were talking about grace yesterday. Mm-hmm. Grace, and, and I was talking with my buddy Alan before that about grace. And, and we kind of looked at this definition, like no matter how, how much you've done mm-hmm. to not deserve right. love, to right. not deserve a helping hand, to not deserve to, mm-hmm. to love yourself, somehow you still receive it and that's yeah. grace and that's mm-hmm. the thing like this is where we move to in this chapter 33 if you realize you have enough you're truly rich if you yeah. realize that you are in grace mm-hmm. because so much of what we did we walked away going i don't deserve that i don't deserve anything now that i've done that and we believe that the world is out to hurt us we believe yes. the world is trying to you know, even the score here's something good we're going to take it away now okay and then, then my, my thing is whenever i fought against or fought back against uh perpetrators okay i felt guilty yep I was doing was defending myself from getting hurt, but I felt guilty. I felt like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have busted you upside your head and broke my hand. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) That motherfucker deserved to bust upside the head. I'm being real indeed. He did, but I'm just saying, my world was so twisted. Even when I was defending myself, rightfully so, I felt guilty. I felt I was wrong that I should not have struck out because what makes me better than them here? They are Mm -hmm. violencing me and then I violence back. Two wrongs don't make a right. So I had to try and live with that. So I I said, okay, no more putting your hands on nobody. Okay. You know, there's this verse. The mouth did it. Then the mouth did it. Go ahead. There's this verse in the Tao that says violence, no matter even well-intentioned rebounds mm. upon itself yes you know yes, like you yes. can't you just can't lash out and this you one can. wraps up if you stay in the center and embrace death with your whole heart you will endure forever and you know like as we read through this mm-hmm. embracing death and knowing yourself and knowing you have enough and knowing you know um and mastering yourself all that all that all of that like to me looks at this idea that if you embrace death of that identity that you have yes then you will endure forever every day you will wake up a new person i know i woke up a new person today and i'm grateful Me. for it and i'd say that people say about surrender how do you surrender and i i, I just die a little bit every day Damn okay right. say, what do you mean you That's die right. every time i learn something that that i would call a thinking error because i taught all that stuff a thinking error um uh, mm-hmm. i correct it and that part of me died that that i replaced with that new new concept and i was like oh that's part of that old person so i when i got to the place where i knew <laughs> me really knew me and then really looked at me and then like oh i don't know about all this and then that's when god came through and says no all of that was necessary damn right Okay. And I was like, oh, I mean, I don't mean to beat myself up no more for that. It's like, That's no, right. no, you don't. No, you don't. You never you did. You never had. Been, and you never did have to beat yourself up for it. Yeah. That was a concept. That was on you. That was on you. That yeah. was because you knew others. That was intelligence. Now you know yourself and you know me. There it is. Amen. Amen. Oh, I love girl. You. We're going to just end it there. Love you so much. Okay. All right. Take it easy. Bye bye. Have, we'll have a good Wait, I'm going to tell you this. Have a fan fucking tastic good day with minimal <laughs> effort. Okay. I will. I'm not I'm not doing nothing. No, actually Andy's coming into town today and we are going to have a couple days together. So that's gonna Okay, be- when it, hey, I'm gonna say then just chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hit okay. it. <laughs> All right, bye. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna bring up Helen now. I think this is the first time I've spoken with Helen.
Helen, how are you? Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. Have we spoken before? I think so. Have we? <laughs> long, okay. Long time ago. Uh, long time ago. Okay. I wasn't sure because sometimes I don't. I, I don't know. I just. I just. <laughs> they, I've. I've talked to many people, and sometimes I just kind of touch. But right, how are you right. today? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Thank I'm God for another day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. 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 So. Um, this is Tao of the day, and and I would love a number between one and eighty-one. What is Tao? What does that mean? <laughs> okay, Tao of the day is a program I do weekdays, uh, Central Time in the morning, um, and what I it, it the Tao Day Ching is is a book that's made up of eighty-one short verses, all revolving around how to live a reasonable life, mm. and and it uh, the Tao is uh so it's an ancient text written about 600 bce that was around the same time scholars think that the old testament was being written so it's an ancient text made up of 81 shortish uh uh verses and i ask i ask my guests to pick a number and we see what what comes up and if there's any alignment with things that are going on in your life mm, wow i never heard that before okay i have to pick Numbers, number seven, which is God's number. Number seven. The Tao is infinite, eternal. Why is it eternal? It was never born, thus it can never die. Why is it infinite? It has no desire for itself, thus it is present for all beings. The master stays behind, that is why she is ahead. She is detached from all things. That is why she is at one with them. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Wow. I can read that again if you'd like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <coughs> yeah. Go ahead. So what are Wait. some, yeah, what's that? Go ahead, you can, go ahead, just reread re it again, please. Yeah, let me read it again. The Tao is infinite, eternal. Why is it eternal? It was never born, thus it can never die. Why is it infinite? It has no desire for itself, thus it is present for all beings. The master stays behind, that is why she is ahead. She is detached from all things, that is why she is at one with them. Because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. Amen. Amen. That's pretty cool. So reading that, what is your, what, how do you, uh, I just want to hear your view on that, what you just read. And then I just, and then I'll come in. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I look at this, you know, it's interesting. Like the first section just talks about the Tao and it's just kind of stating facts, you know, it's like God, right? So the Tao is yes. infinite, eternal, never born, never can die. It has no desire for itself. This is the thing that I really like about this first section is it has no desire for itself. Thus it can be present for all things. You know, when you have a desire for something, all of a sudden you think you know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But really, when you can, and then we move to the end where we're talking about the master and be, because she has let go of herself, because right. she's let go of her desires, right? she is perfectly fulfilled. Right. She no longer has a desire to, like if you desired to have a certain job, right? well, maybe you would be unhappy until you got that job. Uh -huh. Maybe if you had a desire for a certain kind of relationship, you would be unhappy until you had that relationship. And right. maybe if you did have that relationship, your desire to have it in a specific way might blind you to the idea that you have that right. relationship. So that's my thought. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's, that's true. Um, for me, I'm, um, I don't know if you see it on my name, how I think they usually have this as there that uh, everything I say as a born again Christian is based on the word of God. Um, just want to put it out there. Um, Which so, God? Yeah. Everything is about God. 
for me. Um, well, you said that, like you said, infinite, like you mentioned God, which is true. God has no, God has no beginning and no ending. He's everlasting, you know? And um, when I was here, I was listening to the, the lady, uh, her name is Lois, is that right? Yeah. Lois, yeah. yeah, the lady on the front. Um, you guys were talking about uh, the world that she grew up, you know, that she's exposed or and everything. And you said something about, you know, you learn from, of course, our first teacher is our parents. You know, everything we learn, we learn from our parents, right? And um, and everything is like, um, what was I was trying to say, you, you, you mentioned something that you'd have to, they have to teach you how to to do bad things or anything like that. And my take on that one is that you know when you when you observe children, like in a nursery, you know you see them fighting over um, a toy. You know, nobody teach nobody taught them how to to do that, right? And the reason why well, that's not true. But go on. Oh, okay. That most of the time. You never showed it to them. Have you ever seen? I don't know. For me, in my experience, as a, as I have four children, I never really teach them how to hey don't take take this from your brother. You know, you know what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't have to teach them to do those things. They know, and the reason why we know to do those things because we're a born sinner. We're all born like that. We're born sinner. We need we need God. You know that's why. You don't have to teach someone to lie. I never taught my kids how to lie. We have to so teach this them is how. Where... Go ahead. Go on. So, 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 yeah. So, like, what this is the desire for itself, right? Mm -hmm. The Tao or God mm -hmm. has right. ought, I think, to have no desire for itself. Mm -hmm. Thus, it is present for all beings. Like, if if your children had no desire for themselves. Mm -hmm which they learn by observing, they learn by observing that like you have desire and, and being in this world and living under the influence of the world around us. When we realize, when, if, if all they knew was to have no desire for themselves, meaning they gave up of themselves for the whole, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be that and this is where the master is. The master stays behind. That is why she is ahead. Mm -hmm. She is not trying to get ahead. She has no desire for herself. She is detached from all things. That is why she is at one with them. If you detach yourself from everything and just allow those things to be what they are, but you know, like, I mean, it's that's difficult in our world when we're parents and all of mm -hmm. those things. Right. Like because we want to be attached. We we have this idea that attachment is the way to teach and the way to love, because love sometimes doesn't look like love when you're detached. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm coming from addiction. I got 21 years clean and sober and a large aspect of what, you know, I address is that idea of the tough love scenario and tough love. The problem with the tough love world is we put tough in mm. front of love. Right. You know, and and now love is supposed to look a certain way. Like love looks like you put your child in prison. <laughs> Wow. And, and that yeah. and that was a big problem that, that right. kind of started with, you know, like the 80s and 90s when and even that even happened within the Christian world, where if your child was, you know, gay mm -hmm. or trans or right. something like there would be this tough love scenario. Of, we want to change you. But if you were not attached to your daughter being your daughter. Mm -hmm. If you detach from that, if you were able to separate yourself from that, if you didn't have a desire for yourself, mm -hmm. then you would be able to love and honor that child the way they are. Right. And you know what, what you, you mentioned about church, um, this is the only thing that, to put it out there, not all church 
it's not the church. It's not. I know the church is the people. It's not all Christian like that. No, 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 no. What I'm no, saying is the tough love movement. I know, That's I know. all. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking right. about tough love. Tough right, right. love put children in a position of having to be dealt with in a tough way rather than a loving way. And right. that and the tough love movement came out of addiction, not out of religion. Right. But the thing is, I just I don't agree on in the search as a Christian, I don't agree in certain other Christians handle that, you know, about homosexuality. Yeah, you don't have to. You can be detached from that. Right. Yeah. And and the tough love. There's sometimes there's the tough love. And not, there's sometimes I'm not gonna where say, love looks tough. Right. I'm not there gonna is never a point where tough is love. Right. I'm not gonna use the word tough. You know, for me, it's like there's some time there there's some times that you have to um there's a consequences. There's a rewarding consequences in in everything. You do the you do the right thing. You you get rewarded, right? You, you receive. No, rewarded. that is wrong. When you, no, no, no. There's a. I know that's what you're saying. What I'm saying is that's what usually that's how it is out there. That's what's in the world. You know, when you do right, you know, you get rewarded, right? When you go to work, you 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 know you uh you work hard, you're on time, and everything. You get rewarded for for doing the right thing, right? Maybe. That's what I'm trying to say. But when you do the wrong thing, there's a consequence, a consequence in everything when you do the wrong thing. When you steal, what's the consequence? You go to jail. You get you, to be a president, maybe. Pres <laughs> Anywho, uh, when you steal, when you lie, everything, stuff like that, you know, there's a consequence. It really depends on who you are as opposed to like what the consequence is. Right. Some so people, some people get a lot, like some people steal and lie and make millions of dollars. Yeah, but you know what? Is I, that the, I, understand like, where, I understand where you're coming from, but the thing is, even though that they make millions of dollars, I don't know if you're referring to someone, but even <laughs> though even though they do that, you think you, we get away with those things? You don't get away. We don't get away with certain things because God said that you commit sin, it's not gonna be unpunished. Uh -huh. When we commit sin, it's gonna be punished. That's why Jesus Christ died for us because he has to save us. He's the perfect lamb. Mm. We cannot do it. We cannot do it on our own. I know. I don't know where you stand. I, I'm not asking, you know, no, no, your no, faith no, and everything. No, no. But for me, yeah. yeah. But for me as a, as you know, as, as a born again Christian, according to the word of God, the Bible, yeah. is that, you know, that's why he died for us. And that's why he came. Yeah. He sent the only begotten son. Because we cannot do it. We cannot pay for our own sin. It has to be a perfect lamb. And that was Jesus Christ. So, and I, the way I mentioned earlier, I'm actually talking, I'm not talking about the Tao that you read, but I'm just talking about I know, what a, a comment that what uh, the first uh, um, conversation earlier is that, you know, that um, we don't have to teach our kids to do bad things. We have to teach them to do good things. We have to help them mm -hmm. to the, the differentiate the, the difference between bad and bad, uh, uh, wrong and right. We have to teach them that, you know, because, you know, like my own experience with my four kids, you know, they fight. I didn't tell them to fight, but they have, they fight for their own thing, what they like, what they want to do. Yeah, they're know? fighting for, because they have desire. But that desire, yeah. So, you know, and we cannot, you know, God made us, we are made to love. We are made to be touched. We have to have connection. Like, you know, we're all connected, you know. We are connected and then you cannot live, you know, not putting as a branch, you know, you cannot live detached from God. I mean, you can, of course, it's a lot of people don't believe in God, but you have, we have to anchor ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, because it's not, it's, it's not easy. The world is, is, it's hard. Life is tough, you know, and, and then it's just, we just have to trust, you know, we trust in any, some people trust in anything, but the, for me, I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ because we are, we are created like that. Whoever, whoever they are, even though they don't believe in God, they trust on something, you know, saying they trust on something or animal or, or things or object or whatever it is, they put their trust on something. But that, because that's how we are made. We, God created us like that. We have to defend on God. We have to defend on something. That's why there's no man's an island. You know, you cannot live on your own. 
You know, you can, but it's not a fulfilling life. It's hard because you're going to need. Thank you so much, Helen. So this number seven. Oh, Helen's coming back so she can finish up. Um, yeah, you know, no desire for itself. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, what you read is like you said, you said that you have to be. Um, for me, is there's sometimes that you have to detach yourself in certain things, you know, like negative things. You know, uh, you have to detach from certain family members who are not positive in your life, who are not helping you, you know, who are putting you down. You know, you have to detach on yourself from those kind of people. You know, there's sometimes that we have to clear, we you know, have to clear the bus. You know, because there are too many people in the bus that's not good for us. You know. Okay, or- Helen, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna calm down just a bit, it's just because it's like there's a lot going on here, and I would love to get back to what we're talking about. She is detached from all things. That is why she is at one with them. What do you think that line means? Can you repeat again? Sorry. She is detached from all things. That is why she is at one with them. For me, I think I will say that she detached herself from the things that that's not helping her. She's detached from all things. Of the things that is not, for me, it's not, it doesn't help her. She detached herself on something that's not helping her grow, helping her as a person. If we're talking, you know. so so by detaching her from de- detaching her, like if if you're going to read the word all as being very specific to, if that's that's fine. What does it then mean that she says that is why she is at one with them? So she detaches herself from the things that do bad to her and becomes one with them. How does that work? She detaches from the things that's not helping her, that's bad for her. And she now knows who she is. She knows so, herself. So, she knows her her being, her who she is in this world. What is her purpose in this world? You know, you, you can look at it that way. It, it's, it, can, okay. it can be anything, but for me is that you detach yourself, or she detach herself, and certain things that's not helping her, or okay. detach her things that's hurting her, because we we do that, you know we. So when then it this- continues as as you say, like she so she is at one with them, so she knows herself. Yeah. But then the next line states, because she has let go of herself, she is perfectly fulfilled. When she let go means for me is when you let go your own will. Like mm. you like for me, it's between like my relationship with God. You know, I let go my will and Beautiful. I let God's will in my life. Yeah, you know, the Tao also speaks about like this idea of being lived by the Tao, being lived by God, being lived by that, rather than trying to, you know, have your desires met, you you meet the world where it is. So when when God throws turmoil into uh-huh. your life, this is yours. This is your gift from God. When God throws in death in your life, when God throws arguments with your children in your life, when Mm -hmm. God puts all those in there, you surrender to that which God has offered you. That's that's what I would just say, that you surrender your will. That's what I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I let the God's will in my life. I stir my own will, you know, and let him work his way. Work here. Right. And Let you God don't, be God. And you don't have to. You don't have to force issues. You can just allow them to unfold <laughs> for yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, you just have to. We just have to accept whatever. You know, you people will will say life throws you these things. Life throws you different things. You know, whatever life throws you, you just accept it. That's right. Uh, you, you hear that a lot, right? And when you detach, you. you detach from the good or the bad. They're neither. It's just your life. It is just a gift from God for you to experience. Not yeah, able to do that. Right. So the thing is, trials, uh, God allows trials in our life, you know, and it trials, it helps us. You know, we don't understand why all of these things happen. Whatever happened, there's some things that we don't understand. 
you know, but we just have to trust God because mm. he's in control. We don't have the control. We don't, you know, a lot of people think that they have the control. No, we don't. For me, I don't have the control. We ha we can have our own plan. Like yep. say, you have plan today. Oh, I plan to do this, to do that and everything. But okay. God has a okay. different plan. Yeah. God that has is, a different that plan is for absolute, us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, so, and no matter what comes in, we have to be able to meet that experience yeah. with with our whole heart connected right. to that higher power however right. we experience it thank you yeah. so much helen i really appreciate oh, you're welcome. your coming on have a blessed day you too love thank you okay so uh that is it for me today thank you guys so much for joining me for Tao of the day lois 33 beautiful helen thank you for bringing in all of the uh you know christian angle for today's Tao number seven um and yes you know being detached from all things that is why she is at one with them because she has let go of herself and all her desires she is perfectly fulfilled because she is allowing God to guide her through her life and to give her what she needs, whether that's, you know, seen by, by someone as positive or negative or whatever, those things don't matter. It is just being here present with yourself as you are. Thank you so much. Once again, I'm Martin John. If you benefit from the work that I do, definitely check out my links and see if you can if you can throw a little tip my way, I'm always open and receptive to any sort of uh, financial support. Inma sent me some money yesterday and um, other, other individuals. Wendy has sent me money in the past. And I really appreciate you guys for all that you guys do for me to keep my lights burning and to keep my heart burning as well. I love you guys so much. I will be seeing you later. And until next time. Keep recovering yourself.